Hello, my name is Jordan, and today we're looking at NIMBY Rails. Um, so I know that I said last time that we would be beginning our build for the line from Seattle to Portland. Uh, but seeing as I envision this as a tutorial series, I wanted to do something first that I felt would be a little bit more informative and maybe a little bit more helpful to players who are looking for some advice or looking for um, a little bit more of a how-to. Um, this is something that I would normally do off screen, uh, off recording, um, but I thought this would make kind of a good precursor to the actual building. Um, and that is route planning. Now, you can run into a lot of trouble if you just start building. Um, you can end up with a route that is quite expensive. Um, if you just, you know, grab from here and just start going, um, it's really easy to get yourself into a spot where you start making some crazy turns. Um, you start making track that has poor speed. Uh, you are spending too much on viaduct and on tunnel segments. Um, and it really comes down to the fact that you just didn't spend the time beforehand to kind of look at, well, where, where is it going to go? Um, now there's a couple of things, uh, that go into that, uh, a couple of questions. The first question is how realistic do we want to, do we want to be? For instance, um, we could do ground rail, uh, through here. I can create a ground rail. Uh, please give me this. Thank you. I can just create a ground rail right through here. But if we zoom out, we see that this rail actually goes over some fairly significant mountains. Um, this is not something that would ever actually be built. Uh, you would never build rail like this. The grade would be far too high. Um, and it would, uh, the, there's a lot of trains that just wouldn't even be able to make it up, um, at least freight trains. So keeping that in mind, uh, you, you can build it because elevation, um, and grade are things that are not built into the game at the moment, but given how detailed everything is, um, I have every expectation that it is a feature which will be in the game at some point in the future. Um, given that that's the case, I'm going to opt to build in a more realistic manner. Um, this means keeping to low areas where we can and keeping to flatter areas where we can. So for instance, through here, um, there are, these are fairly low areas, um, but there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of grade right here. So we'd have to take extra care to go up the grade at an angle, the way that this interstate does, instead of going directly against the, the, um, directly against the elevation. Um, this is the way that it's done in the real world. Um, not just for rail, but also for interstates and roads. Um, it's pretty uncommon to have a road that just goes directly at a, a high elevation, uh, difference. So we're going to be going from Seattle to Portland, and we're going to be trying to keep to low areas, and we're going to try and keep to flat areas. Um, now, given these restrictions, it really looks like the interstate corridor is just about the only way through. Um, this section right here, Castle Rock to about Kalama, um, this this volcanic area right here, this is Mount St. Helens, um, which you might be familiar with as, from the images of it exploding in the 80s. Um, and this entire area is extremely mountainous and extremely rugged. Um, it's really hard to get around here 
outside of the established roads um, and definitely getting overland outside of the valleys um, is next to impossible um, in any kind of vehicle. Um, so we know that the rail is going to have to pass through here. Um, so because of that, we don't really need to plan for it. I mean, this is the only path we'll have to find whatever path is available through here. Um, but we have more options through here. Um, we could go over to the right. We know that we need to get over to the right, uh, get over to the east a little bit to get to Seattle. However, it looks like there's another mountain range right here. So it might be good to go a little further up. Um, we might be able to get through here except for this looks like a canyon, so maybe not. But through here, you can see that this river comes all the way over. So we could probably get through from Centralia to Bucota and to Nino. Um, we could also continue up where I-5 goes, um, up towards Tumwater and Olympia. Now, there is... Another question besides just how realistic do we want to be about laying the track um, that, that we really need to consider. And that's, do we want to go directly from Seattle to Portland, or do we want the track to hit some of the other major population centers along the way? Um, Centralia is fairly small. Napa Vine is fairly small. Longview is a little bit larger. Um, but these are still relatively small areas. However, Olympia and Tacoma are much larger. Um, Olympia is about the size of, um, uh, about the size of Beaverton that we ran a subway stop to Beaverton, um, in general, uh, encompasses about this area. Um, so that might actually be worth going to not with our express line which will be direct seattle to portland but with our local line we might want to go to olympia and so the question is do we want to bring the track close to olympia so that we don't have to lay much extra track to get our local line or do we want to build a line that goes through say centralia to tonino and over this way um to make a more direct Seattle line that is probably going to be cheaper and easier to build for the direct line. Um, in the real world, it's very likely that both lines exist. Um, it's very likely, in fact, Tacoma has an, a, a very large amount of rail. Uh, Tacoma is a huge, huge port. Uh, you can see it from here. This is, this is all shipping. Uh, this is a giant commercial port, um, and there's a lot of rail that converges here. Um, this is also a huge commercial port up in Seattle uh, around here. Um, so there's a lot of rail that converges there as well. So there's definitely rail that goes through here. Um, and there's definitely rail that hits Olympia. Um, but it's very likely that in the real world, there is rail that goes from Centralia to Tonino and so on. Maybe not Tonino, but definitely rail that takes a more direct route. Um, so I think, I think that it would be useful to build the more direct route first. Um, and we want to focus on where our questions are. So, Okay, so it looks like there's a really nice little rail rail friendly section here. So let's just mark it. Okay. So we know rail through there. Um Could build it through here. 
then we will probably have to tunnel under the school. Um, we don't want to build a giant rail line through the middle of a school. Um, but that does seem entirely... Enti so it would come down here. And then we would have what something like this. And something like this. Yeah. Okay. So this takes us off in this direction. All right. So up this way, I see a nice, a nice line right here. Okay. So this takes us up. Oh, but this is on the other side of this mountain, so we probably want to go actually up this way. Yeah, it would be quite a... Well... Yeah, this would be extremely rugged to, to build through. Um, it's possible that we could. So for instance, we could do something like this, this, but you see this river, this river system kind of indicates that it is not very friendly. Yeah, see this build is just... Wow, so we'd be hitting a lot of overpasses. Okay, so, but we'll leave this here. This is a possibility. We could come up through this canyon into Rainier. We would have to make a turn. But there appears to be a decent rail corridor right here. All right, and that brings us to Tonino. All right, so we'd have to viaduct over that. And then we'd have this curve. This looks like a maybe a 100 kilometer per hour curve. Yeah. Down to about 119. Okay. So that would bring us to Bukota. You know what we could do? Because it looks like we'd have to make another kind of hairpin turn right here. What we could do is we could build this and then tunnel through here. So if we did this, this would be a, a pretty good candidate for a tunnel. Um, tunneling will obviously be more expensive but this might actually be um yeah so it might make a lot of sense to do this and then something like this bring it across and maybe even tunnel through here into there um we might be able to get a gentler a gentler curve than this one through Tonino. Um, so this is a possibility. We could also we could also just follow this as it appears. Um, it looks like we want to be over here. Right, and then that gets us into here, which probably gives us this turn. Okay, so these are both possibilities. And, of course, there was this one over here, um, which would be this turn. 
uh, we'll say right here. Something like this. Through Tano. And to the other side to over here. Or we could branch it there. So these are just these are some of the things. We have a lot of possible paths through here for this direct route. So once we get over to Rainier, um, we just follow the rail right of way up here. All right, and then it looks like it just kind of goes off in this direction. So what's over in this direction? Roy. So it'd be nice to get on the other side of this embankment right here. That involves us. Um, so it looks like there's a decent, decent right of way up here to bring us up north. That would take us into Tacoma. It looks like there might be a decent one right here. Or right here. Uh, right. Right. Okay. And then that takes us down this embankment. Um, that looks kind of messy, though, through through this area. I think it might actually be better to go through Graham. Yeah, through like right here. Now we might need some viaducts, but that wouldn't be that big of an issue. Okay, so that gets us over, over to say Thrift. And what we, so we can get over to the here. Ah, and then we have a decent rail corridor right there. So then up through here, cross the river, follow this road, straight ahead through here. And then we want to actually go through here. Uh, but it looks like we don't have a good curve to get into that corridor. Okay, so there's a corridor right here. And we could definitely do that. Um, but the corridor, yeah, it appears to turn here. So it's headed in straight. Straight up through there. So it would actually, it would be much, much more efficient if we could go straight up. Um, it doesn't appear that that's going to be simple to do. So this might actually be a spot where it makes a lot of sense to pay for a short bit of viaduct or a short bit of tunnel. Um, I think in a place like Sumner, it's more realistic to use viaduct. Um, although obviously we can't go through a stadium with viaduct. Um, but if we got on the other side over here, um, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so we'll grab some viaduct here and just mark this with some viaduct to remind us that, hey, we're planning to viaduct up this way. So we're, what we're doing is we're just kind of leaving all these markings about like key points along the route that we want to keep in mind. And then from here, I believe this just dumps into Seattle's freight rail system. Yeah. So this is taking us, there's actually two, two rail systems, the left and the right here. Okay. It looks like this one goes over this way and goes down here. So this one 
goes up, this is probably a really good way to get from Seattle to Tacoma. Um, there's this one here, which appears to go over this way. Okay. This, this might actually be a light rail line in actual Seattle. I'm not sure. Okay. So this heads up here. They join back up right here through here, through there, up, here's Seattle's airport, and here's the, uh, here's the port, and here's downtown Seattle, so that gets us very, very close. Okay, so I feel like it's pretty straightforward once we get around Sumner and into this corridor. We just need to get into it with a good angle. Um, this angle right here might be something... It's a little more challenging. We might end up having to do underground or viaduct through there as well. Um, but we have we have lots of options uh, for how we do that. We might even actually skip to the left um, over here and try and dump in like this. Um, that's certainly something that we could do. Uh, that saves us some turning. Um, I think, I think in between these points, it wouldn't be that complicated to, to build the system. So I'm not going to worry about that too much. Um, now I know for a fact that the rail travels with I-5 quite a ways, um, for a huge portion of I-5 down, down this way. Um, it might cross over a bit, but like here through Castle Rock, the rail is hmm. The rail might be on the right, but I think we can find a path no matter where the rail actually is in real life. I think that we can find a reasonable path through there, through there, into Longview. Longview has a pretty decent, here's Longview Junction. Um, you can see the the rail, or let me switch it to ground. Um, you can see the rail going this way and the rail going this way. Um, so this one takes us into Longview um, if we wanted to build a connection to Longview, which I think we will for the local. Um, and this just goes to the left, to the left. Nice big old rail corridor right there through, through Kalama. Through here, this all seems very easy, right? And then it comes down process here. Where does it rejoin? Uh, Ridgefield. Okay, so I know that it goes through here in Ridgefield, but you can also kind of see it on the map. Okay, so this would be this would be a bit of a challenging curve. If we wanted to do that, I suppose we could bring it off to the right, although this is all housing. Um, <clears throat> it's actually housing very nearly from the river to here. Okay, and it looks like, ah, no, right over here. Okay, so the rail, this is our path through there. This is our path through there. Through here, just comes down through here. All right, and then it has a not so fun curve, but it's fairly short. Right through there, 
right through here. All right, and then this is a rail bridge across the Willamette River. Um, this little water ray right here is called the Columbia River Slough. Uh, this is the Columbia River. Uh, as you can see, it's it's uh, the Columbia River Slough is just like a a little side uh, side waterway. Um. But it also branches down here. So it goes both directions. Um, this joins up with the the rail that goes along Columbia Avenue um, into the gorge. Uh, these are all cliffs, so the rail stays extremely close to the interstate. Um, off to the east. But, so we would have to make a pretty severe turn right here in order to get back to downtown. This is this is huge rail yards right here in the Northwest Industrial District. But we would have to make some severe turns um, for a high-speed rail system in order to make it into this turn. So I'm thinking, actually, we just take the tunnel up to here and then connect these because this is this is a much cleaner especially if we can tunnel this is much cleaner and that'll be worth the cost to simplify it and to keep our speed up so yeah i feel like now i have a good plan for how i want to handle very nearly this entire route and the parts that i don't have very well planned out. I feel like they won't be much of a challenge. So I wanted to do this as kind of an example of some of the stuff that would normally uh, be done off screen. Um, this is the sort of thing that I would do uh, before I would build a line. And in fact, I did do some of this when uh, prior to building the Salem line, um, the Salem line on uh, on video, um, I didn't. I didn't do it in quite as much detail um, as I did with the uh, the Seattle line here. Um, I didn't build example lines. I was just looking at different different spaces, different ways around, like this, for instance, um, to see different ways that I could get into Salem and traverse the distance um, between Portland and Salem, basically everything is flat and low. So it doesn't, there's not that much difficulty in picking your routing. Um, and there's not as many restrictions, uh, but it is a very similar process. And it's a process that I would duplicate even in places where I'm not familiar with the terrain, for instance, Salt Lake city, um, which I'm not familiar with at all to say to Jackson, um, this would be a very challenging route because there's no, there's no valley into Jackson. This is, this is an isolated little valley here. So we'd very likely have to tunnel. Um, and we'd probably just looking at it, what I'd probably want to do is take the rail up here, get into maybe go up through this Canyon get to Idaho Falls, come around here and do a tunnel through this. Now this would be an extremely expensive tunnel, but it's probably one of the only ways in. We could also come all the way up here and do a tunnel through here. Uh, but it is probably one of the only ways that we could realistically get in. Um, we might be able to do it through here. I'm not, like I said, I'm not too familiar with the terrain, so I'm not sure how low this is, what kind of elevation change it is. Um, but it's the same process that I would repeat with anywhere that I wanted to build rail. Um, I wanted to do this as kind of like a little, little precursor to the actual building, kind of give you context for how I make decisions, how I decide where I want to put the rail later on, we have branches that we could bring up towards Olympia. We saw some ways that we could get into Tacoma. 
Um, so if we wanted to add more stops, it's not a thing that seems like it would be difficult to do. So we have a much better understanding of where everything is and where we would be focusing on. Um, so yeah, I think that that's, I think that that about covers what I wanted to for this video. Um, before I end it, uh, I had a question uh, for all <laughs> 15 or so people um, that have been watching these. Uh, I was considering building some of the extra local lines like here in Portland and here in Salem um, off camera. Uh, I feel like they would be pretty similar to the types of things that we've done so far. Um, I could definitely build them on camera, uh, if there was any interest in that, um, which sounds kind of silly to say when there's so few people that have watched any of the videos, but that also means that if there's anybody that's vocal about wanting to watch it, that they account for a large percentage of the people that are actually watching it. Um, so, you know, if that's a thing you'd want to see, um, definitely comment. You would represent a very large portion <laughs> of the people that that would affect. Um, so I definitely want to hear about it. Uh, but otherwise, I'm thinking I'll probably add some small little feeder lines uh, kind of on my own uh, off camera, and we'll just come back and see new lines. I'll definitely kind of show you around when that happens. Uh, but I was considering building many of those off camera. So let me know if that's something that you would prefer I record for. Um, and uh, I think that's it. Yeah. Anyways, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, and I hope to see you next time.